In our previous lesson, we talked about how we could find the derivative at a specific point. But today, we're going to extend that discussion and answer the question of how can we calculate the derivative at every point. So to set this up, we are going to expand our definition of the derivative to, instead of just calculating the slope of the tangent line at a specific point, we're going to start to look at the derivative as a function. And specifically, that function is going to be written as f with a little mark that we call prime, f prime of x. That means it's the derivative of f at x. f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0. And we're going to take that second definition of a derivative and kind of generalize it to f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And this is going to be our equation to calculate the derivative as a function for all points x. So if we can just calculate this thing, we just have to plug in the x value to get the actual derivative at any point we're interested in. So let's see if we can actually use this formula to find the derivative of, let's start with f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 1. So to calculate the derivative, f prime of x, we're going to replace each of the x's with the x plus h. So x plus h, it becomes x plus h squared. Whoops, forgot the limit part. Don't forget the limit part. That's important. Limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h squared minus 4 times x, which is now x plus h plus 1. And then the derivative function says subtract the entire function f of x. It's very important when you do this, you put the function in parentheses, because otherwise we're going to run into a sign error. We're not just subtracting the first term. No, we want to make sure we subtract the entire thing. That negative is going to ultimately, in our next step, distribute through that parentheses onto the entire polynomial there. We'll get there in a minute. But don't forget to put the function in parentheses. And it's all over h. So cleaning this up then, we're going to end up with the limit as h goes to 0 of and when we square, we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Distribute the negative 4 through, we get negative 4x minus 4h plus a 1. Then distributing the negative through, we get negative x squared, positive 4x, and a negative 1. Distributing that negative all the way through, all over h. But what's nice now is this is as ugly as it gets, because you'll start to see lots of things are going to disappear. We've got x squared and a negative x squared. Those go to 0. We've got a negative 4x and a positive 4x. Those go to 0. We've got a positive 1 and a negative 1. Those go to 0. And so when we clean up, we just have left the limit as h goes to 0 of 2xh plus h squared minus 4h all over h. We want to remove the discontinuity at h. And it's nice because we can factor out in h. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of h times 2x plus h minus 4 all over h. And now we divide out the h's. We've removed the discontinuity, so we can replace h with what it's approaching, 0, 2x plus 0 minus 4, or just 2x minus 4 is the equation for the derivative of the tangent line of x squared minus 4x 
plus 1. Now if we wanted to know the derivative at any value, we just plug in that number. If we want to know what the derivative is when x equals 0, plug 0 in, we get negative 4. If we want to know what the derivative is at 10, we plug 10 in. We get 20 minus 4, which is 16. And it's really quick to calculate the derivative now that we have a function to describe it. Let's try one more example. Let's take f of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 1 and see if we can calculate her derivative. So to calculate the derivative, f prime of x, it's equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. We're going to replace the x with x plus h. That gives us the square root of 2 times x plus h plus 1 minus the function itself, which is the square root of 2x plus 1, all over the h. Well, we've seen square roots before. We know to get rid of them, we multiply by the conjugate. So we have the square root of, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute just to save us the work, 2x plus 2h plus 1. We use plus, the opposite sign, the square root of 2x plus 1 and do the same thing in the denominator, 2x plus 2h plus 1 plus the square root of 2x plus 1. When we do that, we have the limit as h goes to 0. We square the square roots. They're gone. We've got a minus in between them. So we have 2x plus 2h plus 1 plus minus between them. Don't forget the minus between them. Uh, minus, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative onto both parts. Make sure it goes onto both parts. Negative 2x minus 1 all over h times, and we'll leave this factor because we want to be able to reduce the square root of 2x plus 2h plus 1 plus the square root of 2x plus 1. And then things become nice for us. 2x minus 2x is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. And so we just have the limit as h goes to 0 of 2h over h times the square root of 2x plus 2h plus 1 plus the square root of 2x plus 1. And ultimately, those h's divide out, and we have removed our discontinuity. Now we're ready to plug in what we know. h is 0. So we have 2 over the square root of 2x plus 2 times 0 plus 1 plus the square root of 2x plus 1. What's nice is that 2 times 0 is actually equal to 0. So we have matching radicals in the denominator, 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. So we've got two of those. So we have 2 over 2 square roots of 2x plus 1. And actually, we can reduce out the 2s, which is going to leave behind a 1. So for our final function, 1 over the square root of 2x plus 1. So now that we know kind of how to calculate derivatives, and there'll be a lot to practice on the assignment and in class, I want to talk a little bit about how the derivative is connected to the graph of the function. We're going to see if we can sketch a graph of a derivative. Because remember, the derivative describes the slope or the rate of change of the tangent line. In fact, let's write that down. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So if the graph is increasing, 
If the graph is going uphill, then it's got a positive slope because the slope is going uphill. In other words, f prime of x has to be greater than 0. That means the graph must be going uphill somehow. You see it's going uphill from left to right. It's got a positive slope. If the slope, or if the graph, is decreasing, the graph is going downhill, the tangent line will also go downhill. So the slope of the tangent line is negative. In other words, the derivative f prime of x is negative. It's less than 0. The graph is going downhill. So the graph of the tangent line is also negative, showing the downhill slope. I guess we could also say the neutral statement that if the graph hits a flat point, if the graph is flat, then we could say the slope is 0. In other words, we would say f prime of x is equal to 0. And that could happen a couple of ways. It could be going up and level out. So there's your slope 0 right on top. It could be going down and leveling out. So your slope is 0 down there on the bottom. It's completely flat. Or it could make a trough where it comes up, levels out, and comes, keeps going up or keeps going down. But you notice right in the middle there, the tangent line does level out as it changes direction. So what this looks like then on a graph is, for an example, is if I have a function here, we'll call this f of x. And uh, let's see, we're going to put a point on the graph at, um, let's give it some height too. We'll put a point on this graph at uh, negative 3, negative 2, and another point at negative 1, comma 2, then a point at 2, comma negative 2. And then we'll connect it by coming in from the top, hitting the first point and going up, hitting the second point and going down. And we're going to make a trough where we level out and keep going down at the third point. Let me see if I can make that a little better here. Down, maximum, level off. There we go. Maybe. We'll call that good enough. In order to draw a graph of the derivative of this function, a graph of f prime of x, what we'll do is we'll kind of make some observations about this graph. The first observation that's going to be helpful to us is identifying where the tangent line is completely flat. Because at all of those points where the tangent line is flat, we know the slope is equal to 0, which means we've got a 0 on our graph at each of those points. So the slope is 0 here at negative 3. At negative 3, there's a 0. At negative 1, the slope is 0. And at positive 2, the slope is 0. That's where we've got our x-intercepts of 0, because the graph is describing the slope. The next thing I notice is the graph starts going downhill. The slope is negative. So we need to start negative on our graph until we hit that point. After that, the graph starts going uphill. It's increasing. The slope is positive until the next 0. So we need to make sure our graph is positive until we hit the next 0. Notice the green line is now all above the x-axis, positive to the next 0. 
Then we're decreasing to the next 0, so we're going to be negative. We need to be negative to the next 0. But afterwards, it's still decreasing, which means after the next 0, we still need to be decreasing. We still need to be negative. So the graph starts negative, turns positive, turns negative, and then stays negative. And so we've sketched approximately, not exactly, but pretty close to what the derivative of this first function looks like, because we know that if the graph is increasing, the derivative is positive. If the graph is decreasing, the derivative is negative. And if the graph is flat, the derivative is 0. I have one more extension I want to put onto this lesson, and it's really just more of the same of what we saw at the beginning, along with a little bit of notation. And it's this idea of what we call higher ordered derivatives. And the idea here is if we take a function and we can find its derivative, which is also a function, we should be able to take its derivative to get another function, and then take its derivative to get another function, and just keep taking derivatives of derivatives. Derivatives of derivatives. And to set this up, I want to talk a little bit about notation. And one of the challenges of calculus that came out of it. Calculus was developed simultaneously by both Newton, who gets all the credit, and Leibniz. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. But both of them used a different notation for how uh, to express the derivative. And so as a result, we have two different notations for how to express the derivative. Newton used f of x, and uh, his compadre used y. And so when we're talking about the first derivative, the derivative that we just take, Newton would just put a prime on it. So we'd see f prime of x to represent the first derivative. Alternatively, with just the y, we could call that dy dx, which is the derivative of y with respect to x, what the variable is that we're working with. The second derivative then, the derivative of the derivative, with f of x notation, we just do a double prime to show the derivative has been taken twice. However, with the dy dx notation, we say we take the derivatives twice of y with respect to x twice. And so we get d2y over dx2. And then we kind of extend that to the third, fourth, fifth, and beyond derivatives, where you'll see three primes to represent the third derivative. And then it's d3y for the third derivative of y with respect to x three times. So that's kind of the notation you might see. But really, it just means take the same formula for the same idea. In other words, the derivative of the derivative, or f prime prime of x, is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f prime of x plus h minus f prime of x all over h. In fact, I'm not even going to mark this as a key formula because it's the exact same derivative formula. This time, we're just working with the derivative to calculate the second derivative. Let's do an example where we can see that worked out. We're going to find the second derivative of 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. Well, in order to find the second derivative, we first have to know what the first derivative is. So let's find the first derivative. f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h. We're going to replace the x's with x plus h. 3 times x plus h squared minus 4 
times x plus h plus 1 minus the f of x, which we're going to put in parentheses so we don't forget to distribute the negative through minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 all over h, which is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of with this first part, we have to square the x plus h and then distribute a 3 through. So I'm just going to square it off to the side here. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then I'll distribute the 3 into that. So we have 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. Distribute the negative to get negative 4x minus 4h plus 1. Distribute the negative through to get negative 3x squared plus 4x minus 1 all over h. Hopefully, we can clean this up a bit. 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. Negative 4x plus 4x is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. And so we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 6xh plus 3h squared minus 4h all over h. And we remove that discontinuity by factoring out the h times 6x plus 3h minus 4 all over the h. H's divide out, and now we can just plug in the 0. So we have 6x plus 3 times 0 minus 4, which is equal to just 6x minus 4. But that is just the first derivative. This problem wanted us to find the second derivative. So Using our new function, we take the derivative again. f prime prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h. We're going to replace the x with x plus h. So we have 6 times x plus h minus 4. Subtract the function, or subtract the 6x minus 4, and put it all over h. Distributing through, we get the limit as h goes to 0 of 6x plus 6h minus 4 minus 6x plus 4, distributing that negative through, all over h. Fortunately, we can subtract some things out. 6 minus 6x is 0. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. And so we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 6h over h, which is really nice because the h's divide out. And we're just left with a single, simple number 6 as our second derivative of 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. If I wanted to find the third derivative, we would just run through the formula again. But ultimately, with this lesson today, the important key thing is that you know the function for the derivative is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Try a few and practice this. We'll take a look at it more in class, and we will see you then.